Hey everyone, Jersey Streamer here. I just joined some random server to be able to show you and go through all of these different talents. So we're gonna start with Assassin here. His first rank, um, the w this one is normally the one that I pick here. Um, the weapon range increase is pretty good, even though it only works out to be 10%. Um, oh, doubling that bonus when you're stealth and like pairing that with the mastery up here is pretty powerful um, you'll be hitting people from much further with the same weapon this one is also pretty good um, I I do like this one letting a crit restores four stamina and increases your sprint speed by two percent per rank for six seconds it really depends on what you're gonna be doing if you're PvPing a lot this is probably the one you want to do. Um, I am, as I said in like a previous video, I'm a little bit more of a sniper, so I don't really need the sprint speed or the stamina because I'm normally pretty far off. Um, granted, you know, when people get up close to me, this would probably be useful, but um, I just enjoy having the extra range. Tumble, this is probably, in my opinion, the least useful. Um, it definitely has uses, like if you're running away, you can jump off a cliff and, you know, if you've got max ranks in this, you're taking 50% less damage. So, you could jump off a cliff, potentially survive it better than whoever's following you. This way, they either have to, like, climb around the cliff, or if they jump up after you, you know, they're gonna just die. For the second rank here... Skull crack, landing a critical hit from a distance greater than 30 meters, stuns the target for two seconds. This pairs really well with like the range increasing abilities, like those two. Um, this way you have more leeway to like stand farther away and try to get that crit before you know the enemy even realizes you're there. And as soon as you take a single talent in this tree, you get stealth. So, you know, you can pair that with this as well. You can stand, you know, roughly at the 30 meter mark, stealth and just make sure you get a crit on somebody that's not really paying attention. Find weakness, mark a target, reducing its armor by 50 for 15 seconds. Really good talent as well. Um, you know, especially like in the later game, this really comes into play when people are wearing, you know, full heavy armor. Um, every little bit you can reduce that armor total is really helpful. Grotesque, increase your butchery yields by 15% and you are now immune to negative effects of eating raw and spoiled food. This is another thing that I think is really useful early in the game, but gets, you know, not quite as useful the later you progress. Um, there's other talents that, like the abilities within the butchery uh, skill tree itself, will we'll get you these extra yields, you know, and free you up to take one of these two abilities, which you really can't get anywhere else. So, I'd probably pick one of these two. Um, this is by no means a bad talent, um, it, especially in the early game, like I said, but I think these two are just better. For the third rank here, increase your perception by 3% per rank, allowing you to see stealth creatures from further away. Very good. Um, also helps out in PvP. So... You know, for those of you that don't know, perception is your ability to see stealth, to see through stealth. Um, the higher it is, the further away you can be and still see through it. Shadow and Darkness, while stealth, your health and stamina regeneration are increased by 30% per rank. Also really good. You know, being able to kill somebody, I'm talking PvP here, being able to kill somebody but um, and then like stealthing and kind of waiting um, you know you'll, you'll get all your health and stamina back and be able to fight the next person that much quicker uh, it also works in PvE obviously like if you took a fight and didn't realize how bad it was going to turn out you can you know hopefully put that thing down stealth regain all your health and stamina without having to worry about what else is all around you Assassin's Resolve, killing a target reduces your energy and hydration drain by 0.5%, stacking up to 50 times, removed on death. 
So this is also removed on logout, which is something that kind of annoys me. Um, I hate getting up to 50 stacks, and then I sit there like, okay, I should really get off the game right now, but I've got this, you know, Assassin's Resolve and Pathfinder's Resolve, which is something else I'll go into. Like, that took killing 50 things to get. Let me just go do, like, three other things before I get off real quick. <laughs> it's, it's kind of annoying, um, but it is a really good talent on its own. Um, you know, getting getting anything that reduces your energy and hydration drain is great. This way, especially for me, like I hate dealing with food and water and all that stuff, so this just alleviates that situation a little bit. And I'm actually just going to move real quick to make sure I'm not timed out. The next tier here, double jump. This is super useful, and you look at it and you're probably like, Oh wow, double jump, like, okay. It's actually far more useful than you would think. Um, some people, like when they build private bases, don't really take this into consideration and put a window on like their second floor. If the terrain around it is just right and you time this just right, you can get into their base um, <laughs> right through a window without breaking anything. Adrenaline Rush, instantly restores stamina at the cost of energy and hydration. This is good. Um, just when I have my full build, I already have, you know, the three active abilities that you can slot down here. And slotting this somewhere else just annoys me. So I don't take this one personally, but it's certainly very good. Like, just imagine being in the middle of a fight or, you know, in the middle of running from somebody. And you're running low on stamina and then you just press this button and boom, you've got... A whole new set of stamina. You can outrun most people that do not have this talent um, using this talent. Step through the shadows instantly traveling 20 meters and become stealth for three seconds. Awesome ability. Um, it has just so many applications but again it, it just it fights for your active slots so um, th this is probably the one that I take it, for me, it's probably between this and the double jump. Um, though I, I would say this is probably the strongest talent at this tier. You know, you, you could get away from anything. You know, if you travel 20 meters forward and become stealth for three seconds, you can just cut back in some other direction and you're probably going to lose to whoever was following you. And it's just an, an easy escape for PvE as well. Next talents here. When a target within 10 meters damages you, you have a 20% chance per rank to apply a poison effect to them, snaring them and dealing poison damage. This is one of my favorite talents. Um, it, it just it applies to everything. If you can get within 10 meters, um, which is probably the only downfall of this, is you have to be within 10 meters and you know if you're one of the people that enjoy shooting from further away and stuff like that. It's kind of more of your safety net, right? Um, if something gets up close to you, like in PvE, you just let them hit you and, you know, 20% chance per rank. If you've got all five ranks in this, then they're getting snared and they're getting poisoned, letting you get away. In PvP, um, if you're in close, then obviously this is just going to happen to enemies all the time. If you're further away, you can kind of just run towards somebody and force them to apply this to themselves. Isolated incident. Dealing damage to a target that has no allies within 15 meters deals bonus damage and reduces the target's armor by 10% per rank for 10 seconds. Really fantastic as well. Um, this is really good if you're like a solo PvPer and you, or not even solo, because it, it doesn't matter if you have allies near you, but um, if you, you're just going out and like looking to pick off like people that are harvesting or whatever, this is probably the ideal talent here. Um, normally when like people go out to harvest, it's not like a swath of them harvesting all in the same area. Like if two people are harvesting trees in, in the same exact spot, they're cutting into each other's efficiency, right? So um, this is just really good for dealing with harvesters and just lone people you find. 
Venomous, dealing damage to a target affected by a poison heals you for 1% of your missing health. Another fantastic talent. Um, now that I've kind of gone over these three, this is most likely the hardest decision within the assassin tree. Um, so healing for 1% of your health, missing health when they're poisoned. So you actually get... Um, you, you, it's pretty easy to apply poisons, right? Um, you you get the weak poison for free, I believe. Maybe you have to research potions, the first level potions, to get the weak poison. But I'm pretty sure it's you start the game with it. Um, and you, you can just craft that and not even worry about upping your poison damage and just keep crafting the, the weakest one. This way, every time you're hitting somebody, you're healing for 1% of your missing health. So next tier, flare, shoot a flare into the air, increase your perception in the area for the next 60 seconds. Really good if, you know, there's a bunch of other assassins um, on the enemy factions. This will let you be able to find them a lot quicker. It, it's almost identical if you've played WoW to the Hunter's Flare ability. That's almost exactly what it does, except it just increases your perception. Um, and it, it's pretty effective, like... I've used this and you can see enemies that are stealth a ridiculous distance away. Master poisons convert 20 of 20% 20 of your damage to poison damage, reduce duration of poison effects on you by 20%. So as I've gone over in the skill tree, 20% converting 20% of your damage to anything that's different from what you're already doing is a fantastic thing and reducing the duration of poisons on you is just the added bonus um, this is probably the talent that I choose in this tier cruel apothecary whenever you deal poison damage you have a chance to apply a random poison effect to the target and you've got nightshade deals poison damage over time hemlock reduces mo movement speed and widow leaf after 10 seconds deals damage and stuns this is probably the only talent um, well, it's the second talent in my mind that gives this one for a run for its money. Uh, this is good, don't get me wrong. I just, I think these two are just a little bit better. Um, it's a cool effect, and if it actually told me what percent chance <laughs> we're talking about here to apply it, I'd probably be more tempted to pick it over this. But I have a feeling it's a pretty low chance, because I don't see it proc very often. So... That's the drawback here for me, um, and that's why I go with this. And the mastery. So now, just remember, you only get one mastery in the current game build. So make sure you pick the one that you really want, because you're stuck with it. Reduce reload time by 30%, and increase maximum range of your weapons by 25%. This is a fantastic mastery. All of them are really good to be honest um, across all the different classes but this is just it complements this tree really well. Reducing your reload time by 30 percent and increasing the maximum range. So the reload time keep in mind if you're using bows they do not have a reload time they have a draw speed so um, it will not affect them just bear that in mind but increasing the range by 25 percent is the reason why I take this talent. Um, I normally use a bow and a crossbow. So with the bow, I'm only getting the 25% range increase, but you know the crossbow is getting both bonuses. Um, it's just fantastic being able to hit somebody before they can hit you. Is ju it makes PvP so much easier. Um, and I wouldn't say it's broken either because if you're taking all these you know, range talents, you're not taking talents that give you more armor and, you know, random little abilities like that, so you're pretty squishy compared to somebody that takes Warlord, for example. Um, but again, so this is, Assassin is kind of like the, the damage PvP tree here. Um, it's got a lot of different utility and a lot of really cool, um, like, damage increasing effects um, definitely recommend this if you enjoy PvP and you know the bonus of being able to pick two is you can be good at PvP with Assassin and then 
dabble in some other talent tree for, you know, whatever else you want to do. And I also wanted to remind everyone here, um, I just remembered to, <laughs> to tell everyone this, is that every time you put a point into one of the different trees, there's like a passive bonus that you get that you cannot see here. So in the Assassin's case, every single point you invest in this tree gives you five sprint speed for per point, 0 0.01 bonus range, 0 0.01 critical damage, and one carry weight. That's for every point you put in here. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, you could potentially not dip into a second tree until you've completely maxed out this tree and, you know, gotten all of those different little passives there. All right, and for Pathfinder here, um, the passives, for every point that you put in here, you get 0 0.02 stamina recovery, negative 0 0.01 swap speed, so that's weapon swap speed we're talking here, you're, you're, um, and 5 carry weight. So, you know, this is kind of the, the pack mule-esque um, class here. First year, experience in action. This is one of my favorite talents, even though it's just like some stupid little passive thing. You know, when you max this out, you're getting 10% skill extra skill experience. The skill experience is one of the, I don't say it's annoying to get, but it's, um, you know, you've got to go out and just like farm a given thing to get the skill experience. So um, this just helps out with that. Train metabolism, increase your base energy and hydration by 10% per rank. Um, really good for anyone that doesn't like dealing with their food and water all the time, which I don't, but I just think this one's better, so I pick that. Um, and Marathon Runner, reduce the stamina drain from sprinting for you and your mount by 5% per rank. If you're sprinting for 5 seconds, your sprint speed is increased by 2% per rank until you stop sprinting. This is fantastic for PvP. Um, and I, I mean it has its applications across the board like just getting across the map becomes easier and stuff like that but um you know in in pvp if you're reducing 10 percent less or sorry it's five percent per rank so if you're if you're um draining 25 percent less stamina as you're sprinting and then you get you know a 10 percent at max rank um bonus sprint speed you're gonna outrun a lot of a lot of the people that you know are spec for um, probably assassin or warlord or shaman even like it's gonna take another pathfinder to catch you in most cases. And next tier here, rocks wings activate to reduce your falling speed by eighty percent for ten seconds. This is really useful as well. Um, it's really good in PvP applications in my mind because you, you could jump off a cliff and, you know, barring that the other person has that other assassin perk or the same perk, um, you jump off a cliff and land relatively safely versus, you know, the person that's chasing you is potentially either going to die or if they're assassin with that perk, they're still going to take damage, right? They take 50% less damage from falling, but they'll still take damage, which should, in theory, give you the advantage. Trailblazing. Hitting the same target three times in a row grants a burst of movement speed for five seconds. It's good. Um, just depends on what weapon you're using. Like if you're using a bow or a crossbow and you're kind of sitting out at a further range um, and aiming the whole time, movement speed isn't really going to matter all that much, though it will help you get out of dodge when the enemy, you know, inevitably gets close to you. Tangle Shot. This is a really good talent, but... Um, I do want to say that you know you can make tangle arrows with the bows, so you could be doing this without taking this talent. The only reason I end up taking this talent is because I think the other two, I think this is kind of like the weaker tier here, and out of the weaker tier, I think this is probably the strongest one. Um, and you know, it also if you're not using a bow, so you don't have the option to use the tangle arrow, then Obviously, this is something you're going to want to invest in. And let me just move real quick here. 
All right, next here, Pack Rat, reduce the weight of raw materials by 5% per rank. You're looking at a 25% reduction for the weight of raw materials at max rank. This is ridiculous. Um, pairs really well with like the other, you know, weight reduction and carry weight increasing abilities, especially if you're a farmer. Um, and you're going out like harvesting stuff. This will, this is just you've got to take this if you're the person that goes out and farms all the stuff. Um, this increases your heat resistance and cold resistance by five per rank. Definitely useful. Um, it just really depends, you know how how often you're dealing with these things, right? Like if if you're not dealing, if you're not the person that's going out and dealing with like. Um, being in somewhere that's hot or, you know, being somewhere that's cold, then y you obviously don't need this. If you're sitting at the base crafting 90% of the time, this is a waste. Um, but if you're wearing, you know, armor that isn't environment friendly and you're going out into these places all the time, you probably want to take this. Reduces the effectiveness of moving, movement impairing effects by 5% per rank. So you're looking at 25% at max rank here. Really useful. There are so many ways to manipulate movement in this game. And, you know, reducing the effectiveness of them will help you stay either faster than normal or at normal. Um, and, I mean, there's a bunch of different ways to get this, but this is the strongest one, right? Because you're getting 25% off of this, where I think most of the other ones are like, 10% or reduce reduce the uh, the length of the movement impairing effect by 20%, right? This is 25% reduces the effectiveness. So, you know, if somebody's hitting you for a 40% slow, you're cutting that down by 25%. Next here, forage. Gather materials from the nearby area and increase your harvest rare find by 10% and your harvest yields by 30% for 10 seconds. So I normally end up taking this, and I don't take it for the gathering materials from nearby area. I take it for the rare find and the harvest yields um, for that 10%, 10 second bonus. Um, it's just really nice. Like if you're looking for something that's kind of rare, um, like tinsel vine is a good early example, right? Um, before, or if you don't have that skill perk that lets you get tinsel vine like crazy. Um, you can just pop this and then harvest a bunch of bushes near you and, you know, the potential to get tinsel vine has increased. Um, and the gathering from nearby area, it lets you get uh, higher tier items um, without having the tool. Like, if you are near the watermelons and you use this, you can get a whole watermelon instead of getting the morsels. So, um those things are required in, you know, different recipes that you may not have the tools to get them yet, but you can use this as a kind of stopgap until you get the better tools. Exhausting shots. You activate this to toggle exhausting shots. While using exhausting shots, each shot drains 10 stamina and applies a wound that drains 3 energy and hydration every 5 seconds for 1 minute. This is really good in PvP, obviously. Um, and... You know, it's a shame that it drains so much stamina, but, you know, may ha it's kind of funny to watch somebody either starve or, you know, dehydrate to death while they're mid-PVP. Um, especially if you have, like, more than one person with this, <laughs> you, you can drop somebody pretty quick, especially um, if they're, like, in heavy armor and you're not doing much damage to them. You can just pop this on and be like, okay, like, Sure, I'm not going to do real damage to you. I'm just going to let your lack of food or water damage you your itself. Bonfire. Learn how to craft a roaring bonfire, which restores health and stamina to you and nearby allies and cooks any meat into tasty roasted meat. This is good. Um, I just think the other two are better. Um, it's certainly nice to be able to just, you know, pop down this bonfire and restore everyone's health around you. Um... The stamina regen, I think, is kind of pointless. Like, if if you're restoring, if you're popping down a bonfire, m most of the time you're doing it, like, after some PvP or after some PvE. Um, so your stamina is regening anyway. 
but like I said, the health restore is nice um, without having to use potions. And the tasty roasted meat, you know, it's obviously more more effective than uh, the poorly cooked meat. So if you know you're out in the world and you've run out of food for you and your group or whatever, then this is a pretty good option. So man's best friend, increased movement, mount movement speed by 5%, and mount carry capacity by 5% per rank. This is the one that I normally pick. Um, ma increasing mount movement speed by 25% and mount carry capacity by 25% just makes the teams that like are good at carrying you around or good at carrying around your stuff that much better. Um, it, it, I think the tame system is a little, I would say, I guess, weak right now. Um, and this just kind of helps bring it up into line with, I think, where it should be. I think, personally, I think the mount movement speed and mount carry capacity should probably be increased by, like, maybe not 25%, but maybe, like, 15% across the board. And then this does a 25% on top of this, on top of that. Hunting partner, up to once every 10 seconds, your pet's attack will apply, have a chance to apply hunted on your mark. Um, hunted mark on your target, wow. <laughs> um, dealing a critical hit to a hunted target will deal bonus physical damage based on you and your pet's combined level, as well as heal you for 1% of your missing health over 6 seconds. This is really good as well. Um, you know, th it just depends on personal preference here like what do you want to do do you want to apply more damage or do you want to get around the map faster and have your mount be able to carry things so like this is probably more geared to pvp and pve whereas this is more geared to um like somebody that's hauling or you know kind of an explorer or a scout you know that's the difference between these two Man vs. Wild, you have a 1% chance per rank to find edible resources from harvesting any resource. In my opinion, this is really a lackluster talent. This is one of, like, a handful of talents that I just think is near pointless. 1% <laughs> um, chance per rank, so you're looking at 5% total. And, like, if you're carrying around food or... You know, you r if you, even if you run out of food, like, kill something near you, build a campfire, and just cook it. This is just, in all honesty, for me, at a 5% chance, it just clutters my inventory, which would annoy me more than anything, and not be useful at all, because I've already got food on me in most cases. Next here, Bestial Fury. Increase your damage and your pet's damage by 20% for 20 seconds. Really good, um, really strong ability. Um, it's just another one that competes for my active slots, so that's kind of why I shy away from it. Um, it really depends on your build, though. Like, if you've got spare active slots, um, this is fantastic. Getting a 20% bonus increase, 20% damage increase, wow, <laughs> um, is, is great, especially when it applies to your pet, too. Like, if you've got, like, something with good DPS, like a wolf out or something, um, you're gonna shred whatever target you're at. You're looking at pretty quick. Cleanse instantly remove all poison damage and wound effects. This is also really good. It pretty much removes the need to carry around bandages. I wouldn't. Well, maybe saying removes the need um, is a little much, but this it's free, right? You don't have to craft bandages to use this or anything. And it gets rid of poison and disease as well, which is an added bonus, right? Um, you don't need to be carrying around, you know, poison and disease cleansing, um, either items or potions or, you know, whatever you're working with at the moment. Pathfinder's Resolve. This is the one I normally take. Um, I normally go Pathfinder Assassin, so I take this because when I'm Assassin, I normally try to stick to Cloth Armor, um, for the bonuses to your sneak, um, and, you know, getting 50 extra armor almost puts me in line with leather armor. Um, it's not quite completely in line, but 50 extra armor, I think, I think I remember I mapped that out. It's like 35 total 
less armor than a full set of leather would be. And I got logged out there, so give me a... Alright, sorry about that. Um, so, you know, 35 less total armor than a leather, a full leather setup um, just helps you survive, right? Like, every armor, every single bit of armor counts when you're wearing lighter armor. And the Pathfinder Mastery is a absolute clutch must-have for anyone that does, you know, resource farming or even if like you don't do resource farming and you want to just cut the time down that you spend do doing resource farming like look at this harvest speed is increased by 15 percent rare resource find is increased by 20 percent and max carry weight is increased by 30 percent this is an insane mastery for anyone that is in any way involved in harvesting um, being able to get that rare resource find bonus 20% is in itself powerful. Increasing your harvest speed and carry weight is, in my mind, just, you know, added bonuses to something that is that would already be on its own fantastic. Alright, so moving on to the Warlord. First of all, the passive bonuses per point you put in. Max stamina, it goes up 5 per point. Reload speed is negative 0.01 per point. Combat regeneration, 0 0.01 per point, and max carry weight, 3 per point. So, I really haven't played Warlord and Shaman all that much. Um, more so Warlord than the Shaman. So, I'm kind of kind of like go through these and just give my opinions on them. Um, I have looked at these talents before, obviously, like when I made my first decision, I, I looked at everything. Um, so these are kind of just going to be me on the outside as an assassin pathfinder looking in. Um, if anyone has like solid experience with the warlord and all these talents, you know, and I say anything that is like completely dumb, please point it out. <laughs> um, I have a good feel for all like the game mechanics though, so I should be able to provide some pretty, pretty accurate information. So let's go through here. Uh, thick Skull, increase your armor by 2% per rank, reduce headshot damage you take by 3% per rank. Sounds like a fantastic PvP ability. Um, you know, getting 10% more armor, and I'm assuming most Warlords, um, like the player, tends towards like the heavy armor. So getting 10% extra armor out of the heavy armor is going to be absurd. Um, reducing headshot damage you take by 3%, so that's 15% at max rank there. It's also really good that, you know, cuts pretty significantly into some of the headshot damage bonuses, like in the bow skill tree or, um, you know, some of the other trees. So, strict rationing reduces energy and hydration drain for you and nearby allies by 5% per rank. I can see this being very useful and, like, maybe one warlord on, you know, a set of in a set of PvPers takes this. Um, this way everyone's not just like, oh crap, my food, oh crap, my water every two seconds, right? 25% um, will, will definitely, you know, make a significant difference to everyone's energy and hydration drain. Weapon discipline, weapon and armor you use lose dur durability 5% slower per rank. So that's really good as well, um, especially on official servers where things like crossbows break in like 10 seconds of use <laughs> um, but um, I do think in this tier that this is probably your best bet unless you don't plan on PvPing um, or you're on a server that you know is mostly PvE focused um, definitely interesting ones though like having somebody with this would certainly be useful so I don't know it's a, it's a tough choice. I'd probably say this comes down to personal preference. So, next tier, Ground Smash. Smash the ground around you, knocking up nearby enemies and reducing their movement speed by 20% for 3 seconds. That sounds pretty useful to me. Um, the only issue that I would find with this is you've got to get pretty close to them. Um, the uh, ability for a Warlord to get close to somebody like a Pathfinder, an Assassin that 
has a bunch of movement manipulating things might be tough. Um, and it says nearby enemies, so, you know, that means that you can do more than one. And I think this is part of the problem with not really having melee weapons in the game, is everyone's going to be at all times trying to back away from you. Um, you know, especially if they see you use this once and they know you have it, they're just not going to let you get close to them. Intimidation, taking damage from a target within 10 meters applies intimidated to them, reducing their damage by 15% for 5 seconds. Really useful, um, especially if you're with a group of people that are squishier than you because um, you're reducing their damage by 15%. It's not just their damage towards you, it's their damage in general. Um, which will apply to everyone else that they're shooting at or, you know, whatever. Warlord's Resolve. Killing a target increases combat regen by 2%, stacking up to 50 times. Removed on death. That sounds pretty fantastic. <laughs> um, you can get up to your 100% increase in combat regen at max, max rank there with all of the stacks. Um, or sorry, not max rank, just with all of the stacks. Um... And especially like if you pair this with a potion that increases your combat regen or just your health regen in general, uh, you're going to be getting your health back, you know, relatively quick, especially compared to uh, the other classes that lack this. I'd say this is probably the strongest one in this tier, though by no means are these other two bad ones. Um, I'd say this is probably the second strongest, and then, you know, this is probably the third strictly based on the fact that this is just going to be harder to apply than these two. So next here we got Pillager. Reduce the weight of gear you carry by 10% per rank. Um, you know, so you get 50% reduction of the gear that you carry, and for Warlord, like maybe when you're carrying the heavier armor um, around with you, this might be something that you really want to take. Um, but there is something in the research tree that gives you a, I believe it's 50% off the top of my head, um, reduction to the weight of gear you carry. So, I mean, potentially maybe you're looking at a 100% reduction and the gear you carry weighs nothing, which is probably pretty good since um, if you're going Warlord and you're not like going Pathfinder or anything like that, you're probably near the base um, carry weight. So... You know, getting that reduction will probably help you. But, I mean, do you need the 100% reduction in carry weight? I don't really know. Um, I haven't worn heavy ar armor very often, so... You know, w when I do wear heavy armor, I'm going out to kill stuff. I'm not, like, wandering around gathering stuff at the same time, so... It's probably... You know, it, it's really just going to depend on what you're going to do in the heavy armor. So, dealing damage to a target triggers additional damage based on the target's current health. So, I would imagine that's a pretty good talent. Um, I've never actually taken this one personally. And I'm, I'm curious, based on the target's current health, doesn't really say if it scales... Like, the more health they have, the higher the damage, or the more health they have, the lower the damage. Um, you know, so I kind of wish that it was a little bit more descriptive about that. And please, if somebody has Warlord experience and knows exactly how this works, um, let me know so that I can, uh, you know, put a note down beneath the video and say, like, hey, I was really dumb at this point, like, this is a really good talent. Raising shot. Every three successive hits on the same target converts your next shot into a raising shot, dealing 20% per rank of its damage as fire damage. Wow, that is, uh, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say this, this is probably the strongest talent here. Um, being able to convert 20% of your damage per rank too, so you could be doing 100% fire damage. Um, you know, changing your the type of damage that you're dealing up at all during a fight, as I've said several times, is always a good thing. Um, and actually just thinking about th this right here, 
reduce the weight of gear you carry. That's not just gear that you're wearing. That is all gear. So I just thought of this because I realized the name was Pillager. I was like, why is it called Pillager? Um, but that makes sense. So now this makes a little bit more sense. Like if you go PvPing and you're raiding like somebody's private base or you know you're killing a bunch of people and like steal stealing the gear off them, this makes you able to carry that much more of it back. Um, so this this talent in my mind has become significantly <laughs> better than what I first realized, you know, <laughs> two minutes ago. Um, I'd say these are all these all seem pretty strong depending on how this one scales with the target's current health. Um, I would imagine that it scales like the higher their health, the more damage it does. Um, but I, I really do not know, so do not quote me on that. This this would be a tough choice for me. Um, and I find them all really interesting. So I'm kind of like, damn it, maybe I should have played Warlord more. <laughs> um, Alright, so next talent. Barrier of Will. Create a temporary stone barrier to take cover behind. I've seen people use this to like, incredible effect. Um, it's not overly a large stone barrier, but it's, it's enough to cover you, right? Um, and my my only I guess issue with this talent is warlords normally have a pretty good amount of armor. Um, give, giving them an ability to hide with their already heavy armor, while you know, like pathfinders and assassins and shamans are for the most part out in the out in the open. Um, it's don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not I'm not trying to sit here and say it's, it's overpowered or anything like that. I just think that it doesn't really make much sense to me. Um, you're giving somebody that already has the, the innate ability to survive the most, the ability to survive even more. Um, so, so I don't know. It's de definitely a good talent to take, especially if you can like position it well. And it, it works best in like 1v1 PVPs. Um, so, shattering shots, Hitting a target three times within one second of each other reduces the target's armor by 50 for five seconds. So this works really well with high rate of fire weapons, um, like the repeater um, is probably the best option here. Um, so you hit them three times and reduce the target's armor by 50 for five seconds. That is a lot. That is, like as I said in the... Um, Pathfinder tree with the Pathfinder's Resolve. 50 armor is like the difference between going from cloth to leather and, um, you know, etc. With the heavier armors, it's not quite equivalent as going from leather to down to cloth, but it's, you know, it brings them closer in line to cloth, I mean, sorry, leather than uh, they would normally be. So this is really strong. Um, Hitting somebody for 50 armor is definitely an ability you probably want to think about taking if you PvP a lot. And especially if you're using repeaters. Blood for blood. Sacrifice 20 health to empower your next shot, causing it to apply blood for blood to the target for 10 seconds. Healing friendly attackers for 5% of the damage they deal. It's really good um, if you're going out for like group PvP. Um, <coughs> I'm going to assume if you're the Warlord you're one of the tankier people in the group and this is just going to help the, the squishies all around you stay alive um, and obviously it's going to help you as well like it doesn't have to be a you know group on group kind of situation you healing for five percent of the damage you deal against a target um, could definitely be the difference between life and death let me just move real quick here Alright, Pride of the Clan, well above 70% health, you take 2% less damage per rank from all sources. So that's 10% less damage at max rank. Um, it's uh, certainly helpful, um, and I would say that it's a solid talent. 10% less damage, well above 70% health. Um, I don't know, it sounds, it sounds good, it just doesn't sound like my cup of tea. <laughs> um, stand your ground. 
reduce incoming knockbacks by 8% per rank. Wow. So at, at max rank there, you're getting a 40% reduction of, in knock, knockbacks. That's really strong. Um, especially if you pair that with like the skill tree um, abilities to reduce knockbacks. 40%, um, that, that's definitely a big chunk. This is definitely a useful talent, especially for a warlord that's like running ground smash. Um, this way you can kind of negate a bit of some of that, you know, some of the other people's efforts to keep you at bay. Shrug it off, you have a 3% chance per rank to ignore wounds, poison, and diseases. That's really good as well. 15% um, chance to ignore all three of those. It's solid. Um, I don't, this, this tier here is kind of, I don't know. I would say it's a pretty tough choice. Um, I guess I would gravitate towards that one if I were playing a warlord. Um, but both of these other ones seem really strong as well. I would say this is probably going to come down to personal preference. Like, what what annoys you most? Do you, do you think damage annoys you most? Do you think knockbacks annoy you most? Or do you think, you know, wounds, poison, and diseases uh, annoy you most? In Rage, when you take critical damage, increase your movement speed by 10% and increase your attack speed by 20% for 4 seconds. Useful, um, but it relies on you taking a crit. Um, ideally, you're moving around enough to avoid most crits, um, especially as a warlord, because um, you're not like outranging anyone. Oh, and I'm currently starving to death. <laughs> Let's see if I can finish this video before I die. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I could certainly see this being useful. Just I don't like abilities that proc on bad things happening to you. Cowering Shout, demoralize all foes in 30 meters with a brutal bellow, reducing their movement speed and accuracy by 20% for 15 seconds. That's pretty good. Um, 30 meters is a good enough area that you know you don't have to be like on top of anyone. And reducing their movement speed and accuracy by 20% will make things a lot easier for you or like whatever group you're with. So Last stand on taking damage, you have a chance to increase the armor and damage of you and all nearby allies by 20% for 15 seconds. Chance to trigger is increased by the amount of damage taken, can only trigger once per minute. That's really good. Uh, um, this would probably be the one that I take for this tier. On taking damage, so it depends on how much damage you take. I guess that scales the, the chance. Again, like I wish that this gave like you know, you have a 2% chance to increase your armor and damage that scales up based on how much damage you take. Like, at, at least then you see, like, what your b base starting at chance is. Um, that's my only issue with this. But increasing armor and damage of all nearby allies by 20% is really strong, um, especially if, you know, there's other warlords or other people just wearing heavy armor. Um, Getting a 20% bonus to their heavy armor is going to be really strong, and increasing the damage of like your damage dealers, like the assassins and you know the other warlords that are maybe spec damage. Um, that's going to be really strong as well. It it will you know really help your group swing the tide in their favor if you know things look like they're going the wrong way. So warlord mastery, remove movement speed penalty from weapons. Wow. Like, that is, that sounds very lackluster, but in reality, it is a fantastic ability. Um, being able to move around while, you know, while shooting at the same time is great. Um, and increased hip accuracy by 50%, like, that is perfect for what the Warlord wants to do. Um, because most, most of these abilities involve, I wouldn't, shouldn't say most, a lot of these abilities involve um, getting in close. And, you know, therefore you're going to want to fire from the hip sometimes. Um, because, you know, aiming would slow you down if you didn't have this mastery. So I guess I'm just talking nonsense now. <laughs> um, 
So, but increasing hip accuracy by 50% is, is just really powerful because a 50% increase is going to put you in line with aiming in a lot of, a lot of the different cases like um, crossbows. You're definitely in line with aiming for, you know, the base crossbow. And, you know, that's just, that's just a really strong ability. Being able to shoot as accurately as if you were aiming with a crossbow while you're hip, firing from the hip, is great. Um, you're going to be applying so much damage with that. So, yeah, o overall, like, you can tell this is, there's a lot of, like, tanky and support abilities in here. But th there's also ways to deal more damage. So, um, I, I would say that this, I'm not really a tank player. Um, and I don't really tend towards like this play style of like getting in close, but I would say there's a lot of things in here that interest me. Um, and I'm like, I don't know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna restart my my character now. <laughs> but, but for a brief moment, I contemplated it. Um, and I, again, this is just. I I hope they add an ability to kind of switch between things. All right. And last but not least, the shaman. I am still starving to death here, so bear with the random red flashing. Um, the Shaman, I would say, has the most utility out of everyone here. Um, but uh, the passives per level, spirit capacity, one per point, accuracy, negative 0 0.01 per point, and max carry weight is two per point. So, I mean, the spirit capacity, one per point is, you know, is pretty, pretty fantastic. So, Twilight Reaper, increase your harvesting speed at night by 2% per rank. This is like, so Shaman was, was one of the classes I really um, contemplated making like my main class. Um, I toyed around with it a lot, but I ended up going Assassin Pathfinder, obviously. And this was kind of like something that turned me off of Shaman, really. Like, increasing your harvest speed by 10% is strong. But the fact that it's only at night, I feel like that would annoy me because like, what if I have to harvest something during the day, then, you know, these points are, they're not truly wasted because I'm sure I'm going to harvest stuff at night. But um, if you're like low level and this is like the first thing you're putting points into, the night is more dangerous. Like that's when like the banshees come out and spiders and um, all those fun animals. And... You know, so this is kind of encouraging you to go deal with that stuff. I don't know. Ethereal, ethereal constitution. Um, while in the spirit realm, you heal for 0.5% of your maximum health per rank every 5 seconds. This is really useful. Um, you know, it, it just it makes you more powerful in the spirit realm. And given the shaman's ability to like walk in and out of the spirit realm almost on a whim... Um, it, it just it plays to your strength so much that you're just amplifying, you know, you're just amplifying your strength, and that's to me that's probably what you want to do. Collecting spirits restores one energy and hydration per rank and gives you a burst of movement speed for ten seconds. Certainly useful, but I, I think it's more of a nicety than um, something that applies a lot of the time. So. I don't know. I, I would probably stick with this. Um, maybe this if you're like a de dedicated harvester. Um, but I think this is probably the best bet in this tier. Banish, banish your foes to the spirit realm and reduce their armor. So I wish that this was more descriptive and told you like how long they were banished for and how much their armor reduced. But um, it's certainly a good ability. Especially if you like take a bad fight. You can just use this and you know, run away. Um, it's all also really useful, like, if they get banished to the spirit realm and they happen to be popped into an area that's full of lost, well, that just got more interesting. <laughs> Spectral light, summon the light to illuminate your path and increase your perception. Um, this is good for, like, this is good if you don't like carrying around a torch. Um, and it's also good for PvP, obviously, because of the perception and, you know, seeing through stealth. Um, my only... So, my issue with these two 
is that they compete with this. Um, the mystical bow that you summon makes taming um, a lot easier because, you know, with spirit arrows equipped, it does like zero damage. <laughs> it doesn't do zero damage. Um, the mystical bow is just overall a useful ability. Like, um, at, when you are at like higher levels and like using better ammo, it does respectable damage. Um, it's certainly not as good as like the like fully tiered like regular bows and stuff like that. But um, in a pinch, you can certainly use it and be effective. So next tier, Knight's Embrace. At night, you increase your health regeneration by 20% and allow 5% of your health regeneration to apply in combat per rank. So to me, this sounds like your health regeneration, I know, I guess it does apply per rank. So you get 100% bonus health regeneration and 25% bonus re regeneration in health, uh, in combat. Um, again, my only qualm with this is that it's at night only. Um, you can certainly work around that and just go out at night um, and, you know, make sure that you are as powerful as you possibly can. Um, but I, I don't know, like, not everything happens at night. Um, though, keep in mind, the reckoning um, does occur and make it night for the entirety of that. So remember that. Other side dweller, reduce the effects of spirit sickness suffered while in the spirit realm. So spirit, spirit sickness is super annoying. Um, and being a shaman, you're going to spend a lot of time in the spirit realm. So I would say this probably isn't a bad bet unless you have that um, that skill that lets you create the item that removes the effects of spirit sickness, um, which is in, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head which tree it's in. I want to say it's mysticism, but I'm not positive. Um, so, I mean, I could see this kind of being a clutch shaman talent here. Whenever you gain tame progress against the creature, gain 5% more rank. This just plays to the shaman strengths again. Um, I do think that's kind of the one thing that uh, one thing that I really like about the shaman is their talents really play to their strength. Um, so, like you know, if you're using this paired with this to tame something, taming is going to be so much easier for you than it would be for somebody else. Um, so, in this tier, I would probably pick this. I like taming a lot, even though that the taming system is kind of not fantastic at the moment. Um, so I would probably go here. Next to your spirit step, activate the crossover to the spirit realm and gain a burst of movement speed for 10 seconds. Awesome for PvP, for escaping things, and I mean, obviously it's awesome for PvE as well. Um, you know, anytime you take a bad engagement, you can just pop this. And in most cases, I would say you're able to get away from the enemy. Eventide healing, gain an aura around yourself for five, oh, gain an aura that heals yourself for five health and nearby allies for two health every five seconds. Useful, um, definitely useful. Every five seconds though, like, that's a lot longer than it seems if you're in the middle of a, of a fight, so don't count on that making the difference in, you know, a small PvP um, engagement. If it's like a larger PvP engagement where you're, you know, a attacking an outpost or somebody's hub, then this certainly makes a difference because you can like pop in, kill a couple people, and then kind of like draw back a little bit and heal everyone up before you go back in. Spirit Arrow, activate to prepare a Spirit Arrow which deals damage, deals bonus team progress against tameable creatures or bonus spirit damage against targets that cannot be tamed. Um, so th this is probably the talent that I pick here. Um, but that being said, these are both really good. It's a tough decision, and this is going to be one of those ones that comes down to personal preference yet again. Um, do you need an escape? Pick this. Do you want to be like kind of a, a linchpin to your PvP group um, and helping them you know, heal up between fights? Then this. If you like taming, and you know 
being able to do bonus phone spirit damage is going to be useful in all regards. Um, so, you know, it's really going to come down to what you want. I think spirit ammo personally is the most interesting. And I'm actually just going to cut the video here real quick and let myself die. So I will be all right. All right. Now that's over with. <laughs> um, next tier here, Witching Hour. Increase the damage you deal at night by 3% per rank. 15% is going to be a lot of extra damage, um, especially depending on like what other class you pick. If you pick like um, Assassin or something like that and you're getting extra range and extra damage and um, all those goodies. Um, or even Warlord, because Warlord had a couple of damage increasing abilities. Um, this is really going to, it's going to ramp up pretty quick. Um, again, my, my only issue is that it's only at night. Enlightened Mind, increase your maximum spirit capacity by 10% per rank. This is good. Um, increasing your spirit capacity is always good, but at the expense of either of these, you know, I would say this is probably the weakest one in the tier. While in the spirit realm, you deal 4% more damage and gain 3% spe movement speed per rank. This is probably the strongest in my mind. Um, again, playing to the shaman strengths in the spirit realm, you're going to be more powerful. And, you know, this is going to be perfectly paired with things like, you know, Banish and Rend the Veil, where you can, like, go into the spirit realm on a whim and, you know, either force somebody to follow you or, you know, send them there unwillingly. And, you know, you send them there and then you follow them and you're more powerful than they, than they, um, than you were previously. So next tier here, Spiritual Empowerment. Call upon the old god. You empower yourself and only by allies, causing 20% bonus damage and spirit damage. Excellent talent. I've seen this used, and it's just incredible. Um, spirit damage is, you know, I wouldn't say it's a rare damage type, but it's one of the ones that's typically less resisted against. Um, so, you know, this is going to make sure that you're your damage is getting through enemy armor and stuff like that. Rend the Veil. This is such a good talent that I would probably take it over something that is as incredible as this is. Um, being able to walk in and out of the spirit realm without, you know, using other shrooms or without having um, the totems of the other side. It's, and like, especially with the shaman, like, I can't imagine not taking this talent, um, unless you have, like, a shaman buddy that you play with all the time, and they have this, and, like, that kind of frees you up to take one of these other two, um, but you, as a shaman, want to be able to enter the spirit realm whenever you have the desire to, um, you know, it's a, it's a way to escape fights, it's a way to win fights, because you're going to be stronger there, and, you know, there's just, there's so many other bonuses in this tree that apply when you're in the spirit realm. And Shaman's Resolve, killing a target grants you 0.2% cool spell cooldown reduction, stacking up to 50 times, moves on death. Um, this is really good, but I would think it's kind of outweighed by the other two. You know, um, I just think Rend the Veil, like, I don't think you can go to this tier and not take Rend the Veil. Um, wh which is kind of a shame because both of these other ones are, are interesting. Um, especially this one, I think. I think this one's really good. Um, but I just can't ever see myself not taking Rend the Veil at this tier. And this is another reason that kind of this is cast aside by Rend the Veil is if you get the mastery, you're reducing all your spell cooldowns by 40% already. Um, you don't have to farm 50 things to get spell a significant spell cooldown reduction. You just have it all the time. Um, and I, I, I think this is kind of the most lackluster of the masteries. Um, it, it, it's certainly, like, it, it'll affect Ren the Veil, you know, it'll affect some of these other things in here. Um, but, I don't know, and it, it says all spell cooldown, so it affects some, 
things, uh, spells that are not in this tree too, but I don't know, like reducing all the cooldowns by 40%, most of the cooldowns aren't too excessive. Um, and I won't say that this isn't useful because it, it is, there are times where, you know, you need that 40% cooldown um, to be able to survive whatever's going on. Um, but I don't know. A at the moment, this is probably the one mastery that, like, if I was going pure shaman, this is probably the one mastery where I would take the mastery from whatever my secondary class was. Um, you know, it, it's just, it's a shame because I think the shaman tree is really interesting and personally I like playing casters, but um, maybe in the future they'll add more spells and this will just become far more viable than it is. So, I hope that this has been helpful. Um, and again, for like the Warlord and Shaman specifically, if anyone has had better experience with them and you know wants to point out things to me that I either said incorrectly or you know just help me get a better idea of some of the talents I was not exactly positive on, um, I would certainly appreciate that down in the comment section. But if you like this, you know, leave a like or subscribe. Um, not really sure what. I'm going to do next. I've got the Reckoning coming in tomorrow on my tutorial character, dude. So, I'm um, probably going to do some preparing for that. But, thanks for watching and have a good one.